In this week's video, I'll discuss some simple uses for foreground elements in photography. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel, this is Dylan Goldby. In this week's video, I want to talk very briefly about some basic ways that you can use foreground elements to improve your compositions. Now, I'm going to go back to a format that I used to do a while back, which is where I'll show a few photos and discuss my thoughts on them, what I was trying to achieve, and basically how we can use those elements to improve the photographs. So let's start with the one that's on the screen here. And this is actually a shot of Olympic Bridge in Seoul, um, which you can get from down by the riverside. You can get a nice reflection of the bridge, especially at night uh, when they light it up with all the colors. And you can get a really pretty shot um, from either side of it. One side you'll be able to see Lotte Tower, the other side you can just see the city in the background. And there's some really nice sort of reflection shots that you can get from that. But, you know, as I've been working my way around the city, I've been wanting to photograph this bridge in a different way. And so I actually found a point where I could see it through a series of square windows. And that for me makes a really interesting sort of foreground element. And it basically allows you to uh, almost remove yourself from the actual bridge itself. So I'm able to look through all these little squares, cut the city into pieces, and just make the composition a little bit more interesting by including a foreground element. This next photo is actually the one that sparked the idea for this video. Now, this was photographed uh, last January in Japan. I was out at Kawaguchiko looking across at Mount Fuji, and I was trying to create something with, you know, just a little bit more interest again, a little bit more uh, a little bit more than just the lake, the mountain, and the sky, which is very much what you can get when you're standing next to a body of water. So when I came across these reeds sort of swaying in the wind, I thought, okay, this is great. Now I can actually include a little more information about what it feels like to be here today. Now we've got snow on the mountain, we've got a cool blue sky, we've got a cool water, we can see some ripples in it, but actually showing the swaying of these reeds allows me to show that it was really windy that day and the longer shutter speed allows me to do that. I talk a little bit more about how this was technically achieved in my video on the uh, X100 with the Hyder M7, so I'll link that above for you. I like to use foreground in a lot of different situations. I'll often use it with my couple shoots and my family shoots or my corporate shoots just to give context of, you know, where we are. Or maybe, you know, in a family shoot, I'll have uh, mum and dad in the foreground with the kids in the background or something like that, just to give a little extra depth to the shot. But if you want to do this in sort of a more day-to-day -day sort of uh, setting, you know, you can use uh, the elements that are closest to you to sort of give the impression of where you are looking at a certain thing. And so a very simple example of this would be this photo out of an aeroplane window. Now, of course, the temptation when you're shooting out of an aeroplane window is to get the camera as close to the glass as possible, not include all the scratches on that glass, and be able to show the thing that you're trying to show. But if you step back just a little bit or lean back just a little bit and show the, the frame of the window in the aeroplane, you can actually give a sense of where you were and it can just elevate the composition just a little bit, even in a simple uh, snapshot from your travels, just like this one. Another way that I like to use foreground is the technique that I call putting something in the way. And so if you look at this frame, basically we have, you're using a telephoto lens, so we're zoomed all the way out, and we have everything sort of almost on one layer. So you've got the train above, uh, the man on the bicycle below, and even though they are separated in real life, they look very, very close together because of my physical distance and the fact that I'm zooming all the way in using that telephoto lens. So if I just photographed this without bits and pieces of the reeds in the foreground, you might have seen, you know, a very flat looking image. But by adding these little sparkling pieces of the reeds in the foreground, thanks to the setting sun, I'm able to create just that little bit more uh, foreground interest, that little bit more wonder in a very, very simple composition. The Taj Mahal is an absolutely spectacular building. No matter where you're looking at it from, it's beautiful. And the temptation can be to go very minimal and just show the building on it on its own with you know some sky in the background or something like that but there are a lot of things around there there's the mosque there are the other tourists there are the archways and of course these trees across the other side of the Yamuna River and so by using those sorts of things you're actually able to again give context to it or in this case I'm actually able to use the branches of the trees to point at the Taj Mahal and take away that sort of uh, blank sky that you might otherwise get or that very simple straight on shot of the Taj Mahal with no context that you might get and use some other elements to just sort of almost, you know, some tendrils, some fingers coming in from the top of the frame there to just point at the building and make sure that you look at it. 
So here's an example from a portrait shoot. Uh, this is a tattooist by the name of Apuro Lee who does some really interesting uh, Korean traditional inspired tattoo work. And when I was visiting him in his house, he had a lot of these sort of traditional bits and pieces, some old windows, some old doors, some, you know, just things that linked back to traditional Korean culture. And that speaks a lot about what he's trying to do. So by, you know, putting a window in the background with one of his tattoo designs on it, and then having the window frame in the foreground here, uh, this is a traditional Korean window frame, to just basically, uh, you know, add some extra patterns onto that white wall and make it look a little bit more interesting, I'm also able to give you a lot more information about him and the fact that he is uh, trying to do something a little bit more traditional. One more thing that I actually like to use foreground elements for is to create shapes within the composition. So for example, if you've got, again, a big blank sky or a very simple scene where I've got sort of water building sky and it's a basic silhouette, what you can do then is find something in the foreground to just make some shapes to make a little bit more of a geometric sort of composition. Uh, so in this case, you know, I was photographing this fisherman uh, dropping his line into the Han River during the monsoon last year, and we had this gorgeous sort of glowing sunset, but nothing really going on uh, in terms of, you know, dramatic clouds or, you know, other elements, a boat in the river or something like that. And so what I decided to do was to actually step back and photograph him through a tree and through the grass to just sort of frame him in there and give you a bit more, again, of a sense of place and create a little bit more interest in the composition. In this image, I'm doing a very similar thing. I'm using light uh, to create a line and basically frame in the leaves from that tree. However, what I've done with this foreground element, which is the gray area on the right-hand side of the frame, is actually covered up a whole lot of other things. So uh, if I'd taken one step to the left, what you would have seen is the red brick building behind, the car parked outside. But seeing as I took a step to the right, I was actually able to cover up things that I didn't want in the composition and make a very, very simple composition that showed you just these leaves and this beautiful light in the early afternoon. Now what I'm doing with this image is something completely different. I'm actually using that foreground element to tell you something about the contrast. Now if I just photographed the river, the sky and the city with that awful smog in there, it might just look like I reduced the contrast in post-production. So what I've actually done is included this person in the foreground to give you an idea of how uh, much visibility is actually lost to distance in this frame. In this final image, I'm doing a similar thing to what I did before with the fisherman in terms of creating a geometric frame around the image. But in this case, I'm not actually uh, creating just a geometric frame. What I'm doing is breaking up the geometry that already exists. So this very long repetitive wall that you have going through the frame, I've just broken that up to add a little bit of interest using the tree in the foreground. Okay, so those have been a few basic ways that I like to use foreground elements in my compositions. So they don't have to be anything terribly complex, but you can use foreground to do things like adding to the story. So with my image of Mount Fuji, I used the swaying reeds in the foreground to add to the story of the weather. With the uh, portrait of Apuro Lee, I actually used the Korean window frame to give a sense of Korean traditional culture. Now, with the fisherman, I did nothing more than simply framing him geometrically because it was an otherwise fairly boring scene. However, I also used geometric framing to frame the building at the, uh, with the man sitting at the royal shrine, but that also helped me to break up another repetitive pattern. So very, very simple uses of foreground elements, but it can really help to just give interest to what would otherwise be very simple compositions. So I hope that that's been helpful and that you've enjoyed this sort of basic introduction to a few different ways in which I use uh, foreground elements. If you'd like to see a more complicated uh, video or perhaps even something on location where I you know, go through how I'm going to uh, select a foreground or how I might choose to use it, do let me know in the comments and we'll try to get another video ready. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.